over here. All right. We're going to, so we're going to, YouTube, we're going to be playing uh, Brian Von Duen's version of this deck. He tweeted about it yesterday. So now we're going to give this one a while. It's a little bit of a bigger deck. Main deck, Entrancing Melody. Main deck, Mar Art, Murmuring Mystics. I do think Murmuring Mystics is very good. Like, I, I think that going forward, I do want to play a version of Murmuring Mystic in this deck. So we're on the draw. 20 more lands and an op, so we're going to keep. Sand is really good against an aggressive deck. Which is what we're doing. We do need to hit a land. So we're just going to play this. Hit that sad boy guild gate. Oh, so we're playing against green white tokens. Okay. Yield two this turn. I think it stands fine to keep on the draw. You've got a look at... We're going to hold our shot because we're going to want to kill a um, Amara. We're on the draw. We get two more looks. We have four looks at a land. And we have other cantrips that can help get us there. We have three more ops. So we have four looks at 23 cards, basically. I am just going to... I think I'm going to shock this because it's just going to take... Uh, we do want another land. It's just going to take them off Venerated Loxodon next turn. So it's a little mopey, but we're, we're like, it's kind of like bolting the bird. Let's ditch this radical idea. Okay. Yield three this turn. I didn't really want to... I could have steal, could I steal it on my turn too? Yes. But I wanted to hit another land for op, but did I do that last turn? I'm getting my turns confused. I think stealing an stealing a token is a little mopey in my opinion. So they don't have a main deck answer, instant answer to this. So like this is this is gonna like um at least set them back a turn here. Is our, is our boy. Something is going to be entrancing now, dude. Um, I'm going to... I think I'm just going to crack them for five. I could just shock them, but I would like to just keep as many resources as possible. Entrancing Melody was nice there. We're going to opt. Now we're just looking for like a Phoenix. So put that on top. Phoenix or Murmuring Mystic. Yeah, so now we can bring that back. Let us opt. Put this on the bottom. I'm gonna shave. I'm gonna save my shock, but I am gonna go like this, and then radical idea, pitching. Probably just shock actually. So now three six. Oh, I should have done my math right. I just punted there. If I shocked my opponent in the face, they were dead. I guess they weren't necessarily dead if they have like March of the Multitudes. Yeah, okay, so they weren't dead. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. <clears throat> I think this matchup's pretty good. I think this one's supposed to be pretty solid. <clears throat> I 
All right, begin sideboarding. So I probably just want all of my removal. This is weird. Like I kind of just want to go like a full control deck, just steal stuff. Niv is insane against a token deck. Like we just play like 42 removal spells. Like we don't need these Arclight Phoenixes. We don't even need these Electromancers. Because like they're not beating Crackling Drake. They're not really being Niv. They're not really being Rao. The Melodies will keep their tokens under control. Could play Spyglass to hit Vivian. And then maybe like a dive down to protect one of our threats. Yeah, I think we can just like turn into just some sweet control deck against them. Like I don't think that they're I don't even think we need the Arclight Phoenix deck. I don't think we need the Goblin Electromancers. Like we don't need to go fast. I'm pretty sure with Nib we can just all their stuff. I'm gonna go with negate, it's probably better than dive down. Especially considering they're gonna sideboard in such a way to handle this that we might be able to just like next level them. We're gonna name Sorcerer Spyglasses for Vivian. Which is a pretty common sideboard card for these green white decks at the moment. I'm gonna start keep messing with my extensions. Black manage accounts. Oh, are we gonna get it? Are we gonna figure it out? I think I might figure it out. Nope, not gonna figure it out. This is annoying that I can't figure this out. I had it yesterday, which is. Oh, okay, got it. Edit deck. Deck is uploaded. Okay, now we can figure it out. Hang on. Clear deck and start over. Are you sure? Clear. We're streaming Magic Online. Upload deck list. Great, here we go. BBD Drakes. All right, we should be good now. Um, yeah, we'll keep this. I'm going to shock myself so that we have the option to opt. Opt or shock in a mirror. If someone has a check, tell me if that Cardboard Live extension now is updated. That would be great. I guess our board strategy does kind of get wrecked by History of Vanalia. Murmuring Mystic is kind of what we need to turn this all together. History... Uh, yield until next. I don't think we're going to shock a token. All right, let's. March the Multitude's History of Alia. Okay, so let's go Vivian Reed. Might be in trouble now. Probably just going to shock a token now. And I should do that right now before they draw a land and can Loxodon me. If they draw a land, they can Loxodon again. But if if they didn't hit a land, they could just cast Loxodon. The second history is also like not good, but 
kind of where we're at. So let's just start working this murmuring mystic. <clears throat> How you doing this morning, Rafi? Rafi, is my is my uh extension working? We're just gonna block. Then I'm actually gonna lava coil two of the tokens. Because I can just brick wall this thing. We cardboard live. It should be um by the left side of my stream. Okay, it's good. Okay, so and we're just gonna deal with these soldiers because the soldiers get big enough to make my um to make my murmuring mystic not be able to block it. Because now I can go like block, block Sedan, chump block here if I want to. I'm gonna hold my I'm gonna hold my land. We wouldn't be here otherwise. Okay. Crawl on pruner, that is annoying. So now we're just gonna go attack block here. Take two. I could just take nine and block this. I could take nine or take six and lose a token. Take seven and lose a token. So I take nine, I'm at five. Play Crackling Drake. Block here, block here. They're attacking for five, they have a march. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna like deal with the creature. Like we're likely in trouble no matter what here. That's nice. It's not that nice because I can't cast it. I cannot cast this thing and Crackling Drake. And I think just casting this is taking this is better than casting Crackling Drake because it also like minus is one this March of the Multitudes. Um, I'm gonna play this land because we could like hit something we want to cast. I guess it doesn't make sense to do that. So we still have a land. That's nice. We're gonna hold this. Wow, they didn't march. All right, we're gonna shoot this um, crawl harpoon before combat because I don't want them to flip the landing. We have a lot of inevitability. If they flip landing, they don't. We kind of lose our inevitability. And now if they want to march, I would march right now. Okay. They don't want to do that. So if I play land, I can't steal the Loxodon, but I can steal the Vampire, which is worth it because that's just a life linker. Yeah, I should have done that. You're right, Cardone. Cardone, I should have done it with the trigger on. 100% right. So if I attack, they can march for three. One, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, we're just going to attack with our Crackling Drake because um, we can set up a scenario where our blockers, where we're lethal next turn. If they settle, they could settle me here. Yeah, this is BBD's list he played. I'm 
We are destroying. Okay. We, we, we destroyed that green white deck, but I think that it's good to know that I think that I, I think any version of Drake's is going to destroy this green white deck. But that did look good. The version that I have liked the most is Ben Friedman's, the one that like is a little lower to the ground, plays like 18 lands, no Electromancer. This has been my favorite list. I changed a couple things than what I was playing, but I went like 12 and three on when I was streaming on Wednesday with this deck. This is my favorite, but I think there's things that we can take from each deck to make it better. I did not really like the Jeskai Drakes very much. Like it seems like the Deafening Clarion just didn't really do enough, and then playing Clarion plus um playing Clarion plus whatever wasn't great. We're gonna ship this. It's pretty decent for playing against an aggro deck, but we have to hit a second land regardless. Um, I'm gonna keep this with a scry. If we hit a land, we're in good shape. That's not a land we want though. Looks like we're playing against the Grixis deck. That's nice. Let's make him think. So what Deep Freeze does, I'm just gonna cast the radical idea, I think. What Deep Freeze does is Deep Freeze is an answer to Adanto, Niv, and um, Lyra. And that's why Deep Freeze is sweet. And it just cleanly answers all three of them. This is a diff information can't make. It's kind of annoying. Um. I might as well just play this Electromancer. I'm just gonna let it die as. As um, I want to. I don't really want a radical idea. I kind of just want to opt. Anyways, if they counter spell this, this is totally okay. No, we yeah, we don't want that land. We're not in any hurry. Dude, I'm glad we mulligan our first hand. I want to save this chart to just draw two cards. I could jam this Mystic. But I think we're just going to like radical idea, pitch a, pitch a mountain at the end of the turn. Because now we can at least play Mystic and shock something to get a token. And then the token will turn into like Charter Course Bait. If they counter it, they counter it. Lookout's Dispersal. Okay. Because we're already down a card from a Mulligan. We've drawn cards that aren't super great. I think that we want to turn this Charter Course into a two for one if we can. Get this at the end of the turn. And now we can Tormenting Voice and not worry about it getting countered. All right, dive down. Pitch this opt. Nice. All right, yield through this turn. So we're going to opt at the end of their turn, and we're looking for like an entrancing melody or a phoenix or just something like that. We want this.
what are the odds they have another dive down? Let's just be mana efficient. Well, we're going to go for it. Because now they need dive down plus removal spell. Okay. Ooh, hostage taker. I didn't think about that. That's nice. Now we're dead. Because they're just going to recast this. Uh, I probably should chart a course. Because we could spike a phoenix. All right, we hit an Entrancing Melody, which isn't bad. Because we can go Electromancer. So we're going to ditch this Tormenting Voice so that we can go Electromancer plus Melody by our Crackling Drake next turn. And now if they, like, take something with another hostage taker, we can melody the hostage taker and then get our thing back. All right, that's cool. Oh, nice. Let's hope this works out. We have to attack. We gotta remember to attack with our Electromancer. So hang on. Let's start by attacking. I think this is how this works. Why can't I cast what's under it? I have the fire. Yeah, I mean, we could get destroyed by the pirate counter, but, like, such is life. Four. Let's just, let's just play around anything we can do here. No. Now we're dead. That hostage taker was was nice. It's just how it works. I shouldn't have played my land. I miscounted my numbers. Because now if I hit a radical idea or a tormenting voice, yeah. All right, we're gonna scoop this up. I just miscounted. I was I was trying to play my land to play around spell pierce, but I just didn't need it because of the discount. Let's see what we would have tormented voice into. The melodies were nice. They gave me ch chances to win this game. So we did the lava coils, which might have done something. Okay. Kind of again, want all my big stuff. Shivan Fire is probably good. This is weird. I have like a million cards that I think are decent. Like I almost, again, want to just go like this. I don't really want my Tormenting Voices, because if they counterspell it, it's just so bad, especially if we're cutting this aspect of our deck. My wife's cooking dinner, my cooking breakfast. My dog is very excited. I kind of want to try this again. There's a chance that Beacon Bolt is a little slow. Maybe I want Negate, but Negate's also kind of slow against a Tempo deck. Like, Beacon Bolt without Electromancer seems kind of mopey. 
Let's see what my curve looks like. Sort. Entrancing melody also without Electromancer is kind of mopey. I'm a little more down for Electromancer on the play, so why don't we try this? And then we try to sideboard the Electromancers out for shots in the draw. We'll try this. Uh, Sark in the Bad, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it. We're going to play one more league of this, and then I think that we're going to play some Death Shadow afterwards, but I'm not. If time permits. Because I will. I would like to play first. All right, let's keep this. I'm going to play a mountain just in case they have something I want to ship and fire on one. God stealing a thief of sanity would be so sweet. Move them till next end step. I think I, I play shadow. I, sh I play shadow better than cat. Not better than Dalloway though. So I don't have another pirate. But I do probably have to kill this thing. I could just steal it. But I would like to steal something a little more saucy. So let's just get rid of this. I think I want a radical idea as I could hit a chart. I probably I should have radical idea first because I was doing that regardless. Let's say I'm awful good, which I am. What should I play in the modern challenge? Something that can win on four. Dude, I hope for the love of God that Cat learns how to F6 or F8. Like, she would have gone 5-0 if she hadn't have... Um, this is okay. I will trade... I should have just flashed that spell back because um, I don't have Arc Like Phoenix in my deck. But I do have Murmuring Mystic. I don't really want to discard any of my cards. I'm going to Radical Idea on main phase because if I hit Chart, of course, it's pretty nice. I'm going to play this because I think just getting Niv down is just going to be pretty much game over. I could like ditch. I guess I can hostage taker the Niv, which is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, he was just a puppet master pulling the strings. All right, so let's cut two Electromancers and then put in two shocks on the draw. Let's go like this and cut two of these. Maybe we should also cut the Beacon Bolt. But Shock doesn't hit like. Maybe the are the Beacon Bolts too slow? I'm gonna go with the Beacon Bolts are too slow on the draw. They don't play enough big creatures. And we have Lava Coils. Euro Control Main Deck 3 Rip. Don't. There's, there's no need to be doing that kind of garbage. That Do you see that line that uh, Dalloway hit found against the. Uh, whatever it was? the Hardened Scales deck in the first match. I did. Yeah, no problem, M. Blanco. I enjoy streaming in the morning. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. 
My opponent's name is funny. No, he he found a he found a very impressive line. That like, I think I I think I would be, but you should go back and watch it. Like I think I would be. Uh, um, we're gonna just gonna sneak this into play tap now. I would be not correct if I were to say, I think I just want to deal with this. Yeah, because I don't want them to cast, like, just deal with their threats as they come up. I would be transparent if I were to say that I would have found that line, I think. All right, we're going to chart now because we're, we're running out a little bit. We can't afford to do any, nothing. Jeez. No bueno. I just wanted to kill the poisoner because I like if you let decks like this do their thing, then it's not it's not very good. So I can take a two drop, which means I think we're just gonna take this thing here. Because that's their army in a can. And next turn we can play Murmuring Mystic plus Dive Down, which should be pretty solid against what they're doing. Yeah, it was it was very it was very impressive that he found that line. They easily could have the counter spell here. Siren Storm Tamer, Price of Fame. They don't even get to surveil here. They could hostage take for now, though. Like they might have been setting up for a hostage taker. No. Okay. And we're just gonna trade off. Let's get rid of this menace pirate. So we can deal with this. Have them pay. Dragon Drake is nice. The problem is we eventually have to deal with this dire fleet. So here comes a ruin raider. No, deep sanity, okay. Nice. Let's start with this. Always yield. I think we're just gonna deal with this thing. And we're just going to pass. I don't think I'm going to block this Dire Fleet Poisoner. There we go. That was nice. That right there was nice. Yeah. Like, I work a lot on Shadow with Dalloway. And I, I think it would be... I certainly did not come to that line of play. I came to a different line of play that was worse than his. My line of play was to rip a removal spell off the top, deal with the uh, Walking Ballista and Battle Rage, bolt myself. But um but the fact that Brandon found that without a line without needing another card was pretty impressive. I'm gonna make some more coffee over here back. Thank you. 
would you like to be the other topic and then talk about this today? And you said you're good on the coffee? Are you, do you want any coffee, Phil? Alright. Be right back. Let me just... We will keep Demir Guildgate. We will have a Guildgate off here. Is this standard or draft? Better kill my Electromancer. Or I'm going to steal whatever card you have next turn. We could just kill it also, which they did. I'm going to ditch the Entrancing Melody. I think we just want all of our threats. And it's it's very, like, they could just be, like, a blue-black control deck, and the Melody might not have text. <coughs> Especially in game one. Whoa. I could be wrong, though. Because we could have just stolen a... Um... I think we're just going to give them the cast down. No, let's just give them the land. Make it so they have to... Uh, they, they have a land in hand. Make it so they have to like go down with their Karn to deal with these drakes. Lava Hoyle, no bueno. We need to find some chart courses. Okay, so now they're just going to kill it. So we don't know anything about our opponent's hand at the moment. Don't counterspell this. They counterspelled it. Just try Hoogland's card deck. I haven't seen it. I don't really watch a lot of Hoogland's stream. I think he's like. Uh, we're going to not give them disinformation campaign. I think that Hooglin is the best streamer in Magic right now, but his content is just not really for me. But Hooglin is killing it. Like, he's, he saw, you saw that he had Wendy's. All right, Wendy's just lost coil. He had Wendy's sponsoring his stream. Are you going to pick it back up? Okay. We're just we're so ground out. Um, but who who wins the best magic streamer around? His advertising is on point. His uh, his chat is well moderated. Um, his stream looks good. All right, I think we gotta just play this mystic out and. Pray to God that our opponent doesn't have a way to kill it. Which is super unlucky. All right, we're going to give you Water Grave. 
They play disinformation campaign. I'm gonna ditch lava coil to start. Thought erasure. Okay. Picks it up. Don't kill my mystic. Kill my mystic. They have access to a content. We're just gonna, well, I can kill the Karn. Which is kind of step one. I check it out of the stream if it's a deck like, but he's playing a lot of jank. Yeah. But that's what he gets paid to do. Like, Hoogland is killing it. Hoogland's setup, like, he is the best magic streamer there. It's it's nothing but constant content. Um, like, I'm assuming they win with a Doom Whisperer, so we're just going to scoop this up. Like, we don't need to see any more of this. Um, Hoogland's, Hoogland's killing it. He's doing a, he's doing a lot of positive for the game of Magic. The fact that Wendy's was street was a part like sponsored a part of Hoogland's stream is nuts. Okay, so we want all of our threats, everything possible. We want Spyglass. We want Negate. We don't want Beacon Bolt. We want Spyglass Negate. Dive down. We actually might want Beacon Bolt because I'm assuming that they win with Doom Whisperer. So we definitely don't want these. And we don't want these. Oh, uh, shoot. No, we took out the Tormenting Voice. We probably don't want all of our Tormenting Voices either. And we probably don't even really want Electromancers. Wow, we have a lot of cards we don't want. That was a Twitch board for thing. I don't know what you mean there, Russell Wilson. Um, I probably want some number of Electromancers. The question is, how do I want to kill a Doom Whisperer? Do I want to steal it? And the answer is probably yes. Stealing Doom Whisperer is likely better than... So we're just going to go like this. And we're just going to have a plan to steal all of anything that he plays that's a threat. And not try to kill it. Though they might have Thief of Sanity after a sideboard, but we can deal with that. Spyglass for Karn. I'm going to cut one more Tormenting Voice and play one more Electromancer. Don't you just want to kill it? I think the Rowl's fine. Like, like it's it's a solid card. Cut the melody. Don't you? Don't you just want to? Don't you just want to kill? I, I. But if I could steal it, which I could easily steal it, you know. If it doesn't get duress, yeah. Like I've got three ways to. Like I could. I can't really board in that much to deal with Doom Whisperer, and I think I would just rather try to steal it than kill it. Because it's just a grindy game. If I take a card away from my opponent, then that's I think that's the best way for me to win. Stealing it seems ambitious, but like Beacon Bolt doesn't do anything. And if we steal it, at least we gain a two for one value. Yeah, I think the game's gonna go that long, Rafi. Like, I don't think my opponent's gonna grind me out. I don't play magic to be safe, Rafi. Especially considering we want to hit our land drops at their sideboard anyways. Like, we want to cast this nib. They probably take my chart, of course. 
By the way, it's a card that isn't good. You can pitch the radical idea. Yeah. Wherever it is that Twitch posts its advertisement periodically, apparently it's a thing. Yeah. The nice thing is if we do get disinformation campaign, then we can just pitch our Phoenix. Oh, great. Yes. I'll get my coffee. I'll be right back. All right. So there's the Doom Boy. Doom Daddy. Hi, sweetie. Don't carn me. Don't carn me. All right, I'm just going to start by attacking. I guess. Let's just start by attacking. We just want to hit a land drop. Put on the bottom. Okay. Is it? I think there's almost an argument. Nah, we hit lands. Okay. We are stone dead to Doom Whisper here. Thought Erasure. Okay. This probably takes Murmuring Mystic, if I had to guess. Mystic is kind of just a way to get ahead here. They might just take Electromancer until they took Nib. All right, so that means that it doesn't appear like the game's going to go. The game's going to go very long. <clears throat> right, let's hit a land drop. All right. Yeah, that, that's not good. Yeah, that's a good play for my opponent. The bounty board specific the bounty board specific viewer numbers a lot of the time. All right, sulfur falls. I think the best play here is the Phoenix. Because, like, both Murmuring Mystic and Phoenix are pretty bad against Varaska's Contempt. One is better against a Counterspell. Okay. Makes our Eldest Reborn is pretty solid right here. Okay. Put a card on top, that's bad. That is very bad. There it is. I think I'm just gonna hold this Murmuring Mystic because they're gonna surveil into a disinformation campaign. And I want to ditch the campaign and melody this um, this Doom Whisperer. I think that's my plan. It's not good, but but yeah, it's still it's still a pretty big game that like it's not just some they put two cards on top gross. So they're gonna do, they're gonna do like thought erasure into disinformation campaign. 
But if they had a disinformation campaign, they would do that the opposite way. Oh, yeah, they campaigned twice. No, you're right. Yeah, I missed that. The gate's a solid hit. You guys are right there. I should have just cast it because... They want the card they kept on top. Oh, shoot. That only cost one. All right. Come on. Don't do this to me. All right. We still have this huge problem in front of us, but like... Spell? Melody. Yeah, that makes sense. This is a disinformation campaign, probably. Discovery, okay. I need like a crackling drake. For what it's worth, I, I this is the only card in this deck that I have not. I think I don't I don't really like this Torbatine voice. Because it just plays so poorly in the counter magic. Yeah. Each opponent. Okay, so bring back this mystic. Discard this mystic. Crackling Drake. I need Crackling Drake. All right, so we can attack for two, chump away our board. And then potentially get another turn. I'm gonna keep this land in case we hit another chart in case we hit another torment voice. So now they're just digging for a removal spell, because removal spell wins in the game. Yeah, I don't even I don't think. Oh yeah, I'm still dead on board. It's got two power. Yeah. Derp. I got the three and the two mixed up. I thought it was a two three in my head. Just zoned out there. Kar Karata Dome. Yeah, I think I just want to play. Because I, I messed up I messed this up, Rafi. I thought this was a two three. But it's a three two. I thought it was a two three so that I could soak up five points of trample, not just four. That's what was going on. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm pretty much off Tormenting Voice in almost every build of this deck. Like, I think if I'm playing Tormenting Voice, I would rather just play Discovery Dispersal. Trample, you you are you are speaking some real news. While we're doing this, let me just have this deck ready here. Oh no, it's a modern deck. Modern. Export to the desktop. Save. Okay, move this back over here. We'll just make sure that our deck, our deck, our Death Shadow deck for our next league is ready to roll. Import to file, load deck to file. Shoot. 
I need to make some changes to this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Okay. I would like to play first. It doesn't. It plays it plays three dive downs. That's what I'm gonna try out today. Um, I'll keep this. Like, I think the anger of the gods makes your heart and skills match up much better, which is pretty important. Oh. I do like this version of BBD's deck. Play the mirror. Put this in the bottom. Yeah. No, it is much better than anger. The only reason that I would want to play with ley lines in my deck over surgicals is I'm gonna kill this thing. Okay, so we're playing against a control deck. Some trancing melodies will not be good. Yield through this turn. I think I'm gonna yield through my next turn too. I don't think I'm gonna cast this opt. We're gonna try to set this opt up for. Um, to Kotli Honor Guard. I'm not really sure what my opponent's doing over there, but we're gonna have to kill that thing before um, before we play a Crackling Drake. I don't think you want a second Blood Crypt necessarily, unless you play Anger. Like I have always hated Blood Crypt. I hate. I basically dislike casting any spell, so we can bring back a phoenix if we hit a spell here. Um, I think I want this. Like, it's going to be a resource game, I think. Like we, we lose out on being able to bring this Phoenix back, but the idea is you don't want the second crypt. Yeah, like the, the mana base in the Death Shadow deck is not free. I think that you definitely get punished um, when you don't. I'm going to just kill this thing now while I'm not using my mana. I could just take it, but I think that there's better things for me to take. And like this is going to be annoying if I draw Crackling Drake, which is one of my better draws. Um, anytime that you don't fetch Watery Grave with Death Shadow, it's always it's all there's always a cost associated with it. I keep trying my lines and hating them. Uh, I get they are great against Mardu and Scales, but I hate being priced in the Morgan one or a four deck cards deck. That's totally fair. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna harp on you if that's your idea there. Circle Turk, Circle, Circle Turk. Like, if you don't like Ley Lines for that reason, then I get it. Ooh. Look what I got. Now, if they kill this, do they get it back? Or do I get the egg? I don't know, and I don't really care. Mulliganing is a privilege. <laughs> I get the egg, but it goes back to their graveyard. Oof. That's not good. Chalk. Murmuring Mystic is not bad. He goes to their graveyard. That's what I thought. Yo, how sick would it have been if we'd have just like lava coiled this and then taken this pain slayer angel? How sick would that have been? Tough. 
Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. They can actually tuck the Phoenix, and they get the Phoenix back. But them having the Phoenix is kind of like the least of our problems, actually, at the moment. I kind of like my opponent's deck. I wonder how the mana base works. We just want to draw some stuff to do. We have one more Entrancing Melody in my deck. It would be sick. We can draw anything to do. Yeah, I mean, what's his name? Ben did win a game. Not Ben. Um, sucks this thing is first strike. Um... Brandon and Cat won a game last night casting Leyline. This game might be lost, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just while we're doing this, while we're losing, let me just make sure I get this all set. Play line of the void. Add four. Faceless looting. Add one. It's 74 cards. What is the 75th card? Braid push, K command, snap caster, stub. Let me move this over here and I'll find it. We are in a tough spot. Yes. She is not super fast. To be fair, we are not we are not drawing very well here. Wow, so you're saying you play Sinister Sabotage in this pile? Okay, ionize. Alright. I, I can I can get behind an ionize. What's the last card in Brandon's list here? Oh, it's a Radiant Flames. Okay. Okay. I'm just convinced. I'm open to being convinced like that is what it is. No, like the only 17 layer decks that I want to play is UR Storm. Gotta learn those got keys. I'm open to anything else. This deck is. Yeah. Lava coil. You got it. We're going to take about one more draw step here. I've seen opponents like before when it lines up. Yeah, I mean, this deck is like this deck is just like what? Jeskai Mythics. How do you want to be? What do you think of trying to run Marvel Mystery in that spot? I think the Secrets is just too slow. I played a league with the secrets. And it was just like, it was good, not great. All right. Ship it. I was streaming it at one point, but he played Wrath in it. What did Caleb stream? You're on Caleb Derward or Caleb? Other Caleb. All right, these shocks, no bueno. We could bring in Spyglass just for Teferi. And here we go again with like the do we play Beacon Bolt or Melody? 
Because, like, Lava Coil is pretty good. This is 61 cards. I really don't like Tormenting Voice. And I want my Negates. I still need to cut one more card. I wish I could cut these turn. These turning voices just suck. KLD. Okay. We again have the Melody versus Beacon Bolt discussion. We're leaving in Lava Coil. Lava Coil deals with everything but Lyra. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to give this a try. Because our opponent easily could have a Danto Vanguard in their deck. We're going to try this. <clears throat> I guess I should change this to change my stream title to I need to restart Moto after this game. Okay, I would like to play first. I'm gonna keep this. We have a Lava Coil for early interaction. We have two cards to help go over the top. Spyglasses is a little narrow because, but I could have brought it in. I brought it in for Vivian. Like Teferi is a problem. I just can't wrap my head around why Serum Visions is better. No, because, yeah, it's just Wraith. Also, we fetch so much that our Spy is bottom time. So, well, I'm going to you. Yeah, no, it's just, it's really just Street Wraith. Like, you're, if, you, if you're like, we'll, we'll stream some Death Shadow here in a second after this, and we can kind of show you. But, like, just the interaction with Street Wraith is just so good. There. And, like, Opt is just... Opt is just not great. Heater. Bluff that Counterspell. I don't necessarily believe that. Free Mania. But, like, Serum Vision is just too good not to play. I like playing at instant speed. I used to, that's why I cut my Liliana's a long time ago because I didn't play it in some speed against the control decks. Can I lava coil this? Please. All right. Again, we're just going to play this. We have so many threats that we just want to deploy them here. I think Rix's Shadow plays it in some speed. Um, I don't really want to jam into this counter spell. So let's just let's just pass. They might play Teferi, tick down on this, and then we can play Ral and tick up. Or we can just slam Niv after Teferi's been ticked down. If they play Lyra, we can just double lava coil it, which doesn't feel good. But it's at least something. Okay. We're just going to nug this to Fairy. I think, again, we're just going to use our mana efficiently. Like, if we get negated, we get negated. But, like, we could chart a course, draw two cards, but then I don't know what else we're doing. 
And we saw Ionize out of their deck in game one. All right. We wouldn't mind a land. We're going to take this Entrancing Melody, I think. What does the Electromancer do? The Entrancing Melody is bad without the Electromancer, so let's just take the Electromancer. A land there wouldn't have been terrible. Rather, we don't have a free cantrip to a combo or have to make a level of to get to play. Snap top. You're never snap casting a cantrip. Like I think I think if you're snap casting a cantrip, you're likely either going to play a very long game in which Serum Visions is better in that scenario, or you're just using your Snapcaster Mage to trade resources and push damage. Like snap snap serum visions is pretty bad. Snapped off is, is pretty much worse. But um Well, the Shadow deck is a legacy deck. IMO. Um, Lyra. Lyra Dawnbringer. Yeah. Let's see if we can get something here. This is going to elicit a response. Oh, shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, I can still kill this thing. Almost punted there. Still kind of punted. It's going to work out OK. Now we're going to get into this. You don't always. I think you should consider, like, you always have a turn one play when you play Death Shadow. You've either got discard spells, thought scour, or removal spells, or a stubborn denial. Like, if you don't, if, like, if you don't have a turn one play with Death Shadow, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty rare in my, in my, uh, opinion. All right, we got a twofer, and it's going to leave something behind. It's going to chart a course. Adanto. All right, let's get into this. Let's get into this hero. Nope. And I'm just going to draw two cards. I could ditch the Phoenix, but I'm pretty sure that that is. I should have used my Planeswalker first. This is poor sequencing. Poor sequencing from the home team. We're just going to take this. Yeah, I should have plus Ralph first. You were right. I don't feel like my opponent's deck's a very good Teferi deck. But I don't mind playing a Teferi deck if you're kind of like history of Vanalia in the Teferi. But I don't really know how you're casting History of Vanalia, whatever it is, and um, History of Vanalia, Rekindling Phoenix, and Teferi. Encountered that across the table more times than I thought I would. Yeah, I like actively try not to see our visions on turn one. What is this, like a Ixlong Finding? 
feels like an Ixalan find. This is an Aurelia. Aurelia is not very good. History is pretty good. We can't kill the Teferi, though, unless we have a pretty nutso Phoenix turn. Cast Radical Idea. How do I want to do this? I have to kill this, and I have to make it so there's five instants and sorceries. Radical Idea plus Radical Idea. Okay, we can kill the Teferi. We can kill the Teferi if my opponent doesn't have anything. Audio is in sync for me. Let's go here first. We can kill the Teferi if our opponent has nothing. There are five instants and sorceries. So now that there's five, is this in exile as well? In exile and in your graveyard. Okay. I'm going to do this no matter what. Phoenix comes back. It's hard to like see exactly what you're talking about there circle circle like when i get back when i when i get into the next league we'll we'll play we'll play like a slower death shadow league than i normally play to fairy that makes sense they tuck something though we can just play niv i mean we're still just gonna like niv them out of this game So we're doing this no matter what. I can actually Niv, put on, put in hand. Okay, blue, red. So now I can actually Niv this token. That is not how that works, my friend. Resolves. Here comes the concession, okay. Sorry, Dylan. I know you're trying to close. No, it's no big deal. Like asking questions is good. There's just a lot going on with these games, and I have to, I have to think. Don't ever, don't ever apologize for asking questions. People that are mean to you when you ask questions are dumb. Um, do we want this spyglass, or do we want this negate? I don't really think we want negate. Like, yeah, we can hit Teferi, but we can bring the Spyglass in and hit Teferi, and we don't have to hold up mana. Do we want Dive Down? I wonder if we got a Dive Down, too. I don't really just don't want these counter spells on the play. Like, they can hit a History early, but, like, I think we should be all right with that. I kind of like to have, like, two of these as well. Then, like, bring this in, bring Dive Down in. Let's just try this. I don't like my, my electromancers aren't as good on the draw, and my negates aren't as good on the draw. Dude, die down plus nib equals pestermite plus slinger twin. Uh. 
right, same's not bad. Side out two Electromancers just to draw one, draw one. It's like an absolute champion. We can actually bring back, we can bring back a Phoenix on two with this hand. Metadonto is scary. So you were being annoying. I'll kick you out. Okay, so now we can bring this back without without um I should have played a land there. That was a punt. This is a punt. Now they kill this. I can't do it. Uh oh. I'm gonna give myself the option to get another Phoenix back. You gonna counter this? All right. We're not blocking a Danto. <clears throat> Next time we can even save a charter course for like a draw two if we want, or we can just like try to go absolutely nuts. Show me a Phoenix. I think we're just going to go like this. Draw two cards after combat. And then play a tap land. I, went, I wanted to do one chart before combat. Because if we spike another Phoenix, then we're cracking him for eight. Which is these. And our murmuring boy is going to deal with this Adanto. I, I'm starting to think that this version is just way better than the Jeskai version if you want to play a deck that's like better against the creature version. Because like Murmuring Mystic just is the absolute stone cold nutter butter goods. So we might have to do some blocking. And I think we're going to do that. We're just going to go like this. And I'm totally cool trading off an Arclight Phoenix here. Yeah, it's like these do nothing. All right, let's just. I don't really want to like we can we can create a lot of value and not play into a counter spell, but they only have one card. Dece. Now we can get in with a phoenix. Dude, shake the foundations would be awesome. You're dead AF opponent. I guess they could hit Lava Coil. Um, one, two, three, four. We can just play. Again, I don't really want to play in any of their counter spells. Let's just jam this. Because what are we doing here? We attack with everything. They go block, block. They take six. Can't activate anything. They have a counter spell.
So let's jam. Let's give him something to counter before combat. Counter this, you're dead. You imagine how sweet it's going to be if we get to draw all of these lands off the settler wreckage? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's, let's get this 4-1. <clears throat> Let's go check on my wife after this match too. Sounds like she's fighting with the dog a little bit. Sorry about this. Alright. I would like to play first, yes. Um This hand is slower than frozen ketchup, but we're gonna we're gonna keep it. If we hit a an untapped land, then the hand's pretty awesome. But besides that, I forgot to restart Mono. All right, we're playing a mirror. Yield to this turn. We're going to hold this up to shock their Electromancer, and then we can hopefully... GP is streaming. What are your bets on the decks to top eight? I think there'll be, like, two drakes, two green blacks, uh, one mono red. God, this is so slow. Put on top, sure. I think we're just going to wait and play this Electromancer when we can do something with it. Um, what else do I think? I think that I think White Weenie will be pretty bad. All right, we're going to take the two for one here. We lost to a deck like this earlier. This Grixis Dragons deck might just be good if... Um, if this uh, blue-red deck is good. All right, let's see if we can hit something here to one mana off of our Electromancer. We didn't. So let's just play our Electromancer for like a little bit of a threat. It's a good way to play for made it. Yeah, dude, like Niv. That just might be the next level. Like honestly, playing Niv just as long as you can beat as long as the um yield until next end step. Like just jamming all these nivs is probably just the next progression. We're going to ditch this mountain. All right, let's see if we can hit a spell off of this. Let's put it on top. This is why I hate this, because we're just about to get two for one here. Yeah, see, they're going to counterspell this. It's not as bad, but we're down to one card. That's why I think I think you really I can't I don't think you can play Tormenting Voice. But I think the Grixis and UV decks are seem too slow. I would agree. Now they're gonna Nikki my last spell. Yeah, dude. Yeah. 
Blah. Yeah, I'm I, I, I'm really off from it, boys. Especially if I think that the metagame is going to move to react to this deck, I don't think you can play Tormenting Voice, because if it just gets counterspelled, you're just going to hurl. I'm about to hurl anyways, because they're going to flip. They're, they're just sitting there on, like, three counterspells. They're about to flip this Nikki. Yeah, see, like, we're, we're going to get two for here. Wow, that worked. I think you'll be able to play three color decks like next week. This Nikki's going to flip. Please don't do this to me. They're not going to flip Nikki, which is sweet. I pretty much didn't care as long as the Bolas wasn't flipped. Don't have another eye on eyes, please. My God. We're kind of in it. We're getting two for it here. We have we've gotten two for one three times. Two times we're kind of in it. Okay. Now we've gotten two for one a million times. Do a thought erasure. Now this Nikki's gonna flip next turn though. Maybe I was I messed up. I was supposed to keep the Electromancer to give me more looks at cards. Now I just have to ditch this nickel bolt, ditch this thing. Because I have to hit another. You know. Would have liked to have been able to set that up to be different, but. One. I don't think just casting this Arclight Phoenix is going to do anything for me. Son of a bitch. <clears throat> I have a 2-2. Two -two. Maybe I'm supposed to just jam it. That's also bad. Yeah, we're good. I yield. I yield, opponent. And the best way to beat Niv is with the Elvis Reborn. Like, if you want to win a Niv Mirror, that's the best way to do it. If Mystic Sticks, yes. Maybe these melodies aren't good. I really don't want to keep all of these Lava Coils in, but Nikki's going to put a lot of pressure on us. Like stealing a Nikki is the best way to beat Nikki. Three, four, 
Three melodies is still probably over the top. I mean, we now spy glassing nickel Nikki isn't even that good. Okay, we we did this earlier. All right, we're gonna bring in the beacon bolts because of the discard. I want I want more of these on the play. I think. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep all of my electromancers in on the play because of how well they play with charter course, and just get like, just ditch these tormenting voices. I'm gonna ditch one more tormenting voice. I think tormenting voice is garbage. That is my opinion on the situation. Who would like to play first? Oh, God, we have double dive down, but we have two good cards that are work well with dive down. I'm going to shock myself. This isn't a matchup where my life total is going to be in a lot of peril. The last thing I also want to do is mulligan against like a bolus deck. Just keep in lands. Oh, that hurts. All right, well. Two Murmuring Mystics. We gotta hit land, but this is also something that I thought was kind of decent in these decks. Is I like Search for his Kanta out of the sideboard because in matchups where you want to go bigger, it's just another land, which I like. It's a land that like can do stuff. Like I think if you watched one of my videos a while ago, I got to the point where I was playing against Jeskai. I ended up losing to a Niv, but I could go from no cards in hand. To returning a phoenix every turn because we had because I had a search for his canta. Give me land. Blech. Gas. I'm just going to start jamming too. That's bad. I did not like Firemind Research. Incoming Niv. Jeez. Give me a land. Add two mana. No. That's next. It might just be pretty soon because I cannot beat a Nim. Oh my god, I'm just my opponent's gonna draw like 14 cards off of this thing. Gross. We need Sarkin and Niv and Shadow Sideboard. Real news. All right, I yield. I yield. All right, let's open up that treasure chest. Yeah, so Grixis Dragons, I think, is, like, let's go back to BBD's deck here.
We're going to play your list, Brandon, but let me just, we're going to open up our pity chest. And I have to restart Moto before the next thing. Oh, I open up an omniscience. Too. I think it's very good, Brandon. I think I think if it's right, like when it is right to play Jace, it is. I think it is just the best option for this deck. Let me move back over here to this deck, though. So I like this deck a lot against the aggressive decks. This is like the version of the deck that beats the aggressive decks and kind of wants to pseudo go over the top in the mirrors. But what I think the problem is with this deck is, is this deck is very soft to other decks. It's very soft to, um, it's very soft to other Nib decks because you don't get underneath of them. So I think that, like, I actually just, the more I play this deck, the worse that I think it is. I think there's very good aspects of it. Like, I think Murmuring Mystic is the stones. Like I want to move back over to like a, a no electromancer version that has like like cut this and cut like one cannonade and then bring in like um what's the murmuring Whatever, bring in two Murmuring Mystics in here. And I think that's like your, your anti-aggro card out of this plan. I think the other one just doesn't get underneath enough decks. And it does, like it, it's specifically super weak to the other nib decks. But let's shut off our recording here.